Welcome, and thank you for joining me on this very special evening. I'm Clark Collis, Senior Writer at Entertainment Weekly magazine, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this 90-second street-wide talk, which is titled, Apple TV's Trying, Esther Smith and Rafe Spall in Conversation. Effortless, heartwarming, delightful, heartbreaking, hilarious, charming, and sincere are just a few words that have been associated with this moving comedy that follows Nikki and Jason, a young couple struggling with fertility issues that eventually decide to embark on the journey of adoption. The second season of Trying continues to observe the couple's journey through the process, but explores new hardships as the couple meets a little girl called Princess at an adoption event, only to learn that there are obstacles to their plan that may prove insurmountable. The series addresses very real human experiences, ones that are often painful to acknowledge or see portrayed on screen. Written with honesty, meaning, and sensitivity, Trying is, more than anything, a show that reminds us that sometimes laughter is the best way to cope with challenges in our lives. Without spoiling too much prior to this Friday's Season 2 finale, I'd like to get this conversation started. Please welcome BAFTA nominee Esther Smith, who portrays Nikki, and SAG nominee Rafe Spall, who plays Jason. Rafe and Esther, thank you so much for joining me uh, tonight at this uh, special event. I really appreciate it. It's such a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And thank you also for trying, which which I have to say has been uh, one of the sort of great small screen treats uh, of the last year. And in fact, small screen is the only way I've been watching anything, obviously, um, <laughs> up till very recently. But I've just absolutely fallen in love with the show um, I was watching, I was re-watching parts of it earlier on, and it's just stunning to me how, you know, it really, you know, one minute can be, you know, very, very dramatic, and the next can be, you know, absolutely hilarious, and there are moments that are both, and, and I'd like to start off really by, by talking about that. Rafe, what's it like? I mean, is that a sort of mood that you can key into, or a sort of, you know, two moods that you can key into quite easily when you're shooting? Look, Clark, you know, it's we're only as good as the material that we're reading. Um, and the Andy, the writer who's written every episode, which in this in this modern age is quite a rare feat, because uh, shows like this are generally written by more than one one person. And he's written every single of the 16 episodes that we've done and is going to write the next season. And he makes it easy. It's, uh, as, you, as you've pointed out, it's a show which um, straddles genres, as it were. So it's, uh, it's, it deals with something very serious, which is infertility, which uh, from, a, from a lot of people's point of view is, is, is no laughing matter. But the way that he's decided to deal with it is, is using levity and humour and, um, you know, a sort of comedic tone to deal with a to uh, to deal with a specifically difficult subject, and so for us, it's just it's easy, it's easy because that's my experience of life. Really, is that when things are difficult or or dark or tough in my own experience, I I, I tend to turn to to comedy. I tend to turn to um the light in the dark. I think that's a very human way of coping, and the, and the tone of the show reflects that but our job's easy because it's it's all there for us and especially when i'm looking into the eyes of the the incredibly talented esther smith you know she she makes it easy i'm only as as good as her and really my mo on this show clark is to keep up with her is to like just stay in the stay in the fight as it were because she's so she's so brilliant and uh easy and um uh fun to act with and also hang out with um, and, and Esther, your character is, you know, as is Rafe's character, you know, fun, um, but also, you know, the show does have these dramatic moments. What, what's it like to, to, you know, what's it like to inhabit uh, your character? Um, I love uh, playing Nikki for so many different reasons. Um, I get to tell a story that is not necessarily explored a lot, I think, uh, in entertainment and I get to you know work opposite Rafe Spall 
who I'd never heard of before doing this job. No, so it was really yeah, good you to were meet a, him. She was a big fan. She was a big, <laughs> she was a big fan and she was starstruck. Never heard of him. I thought it was his first job, so I was trying to help no, him through. No, she was very aware, Clark, of my entire oeuvre. <laughs> I was, I don't even know what oeuvre means, but yeah, I was yeah, very exactly. aware of your, your hoover. It's, 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 it's French for omelette, so I don't know why he's yeah, it's it French up. for omelette, it's French for omelette. So you can see what I'm dealing with. She doesn't even know what words like oeuvre mean. She doesn't. She doesn't know about French cuisine. It's different. We do. Cuisine. We do. We do what we can. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I, um, you know, I, 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 I love my job. I love, yeah, spending time with the great race ball. And um, my oeuvre. But I just you're with your herbras. Um, you're many herbras, and uh, <laughs> I just I just love playing Nikki. I really enjoy that I get to spend more time with her, doing more seasons with her. So obviously, which is brilliant that we get to do season three. So I get to to see where she's going to be taken, and it's so it's such a lovely treat as an actor to be able to do because comedy is one of my favourite things to do. I I love doing comedy. It's I think what I worked most in, but I also get to tell this very emotional, heartfelt, real story. And um, it's always lovely to get your teeth into that as well. And and you try and do it with the most integrity that you can, because you're representing something that is very real to a lot of people. Um, and also you want to shine the subject matter in, a, in an honest light. And I think Andy, the writer, is, as Rafe said, has been brilliant at kind of showing that and creating this story, which has both that honesty but has also that joy and that funny and that that humor in it um yeah and Rafe how did you get involved in in the project in the first place I was asked to audition and uh I I was filming a movie in Atlanta and I I was um uh doing a, a part where I had to to play the district attorney of Alabama and I was there and I was really worried about my accent because no one had heard me do it and I was really stressed out in this big courtroom scene and Jamie Foxx was in it the archetypal southern gentleman uh, I was I was doing a I was doing a scene a scene in front of hundreds of extras from the south and I was really stressed out and then I got this thing in my inbox about this this comedy for Apple TV plus which is set in England and I was like god damn it I get to do my own accent I'm in. And then, and then I read it and, uh, I was super, super just blown away. Really. It felt like what I've been waiting for for a long time. Um, uh, was it was an opportunity to, I guess, like play a version of, which is of myself. Uh, even though me and the character are different, like I'm able to bring a lot of my own energy to it and a lot of my own sort of natural rhythms, I guess, with the, the want of sounding sort of, cheesy and um self-aggrandizing but like i was like yeah this this fits and it's sort of i don't know if esther will agree like sometimes you read things and it's like wow this feels like it's being written for me this feels like this feels like the stars need to align on this and then and then i found out that they were really interested in esther uh to play the to play the lead woman and uh they then put us together for the dreaded chemistry test not the Bunsen burner variety, but the <laughs> but the one where you have to sort of prove to a, a to a room of people that you've never met before that you have chemistry with another person, and so we uh, we had to do that, and we met before the audition to to um, to go over the lines and to like have a practice, but we just ended up talking for three hours and and and, and really getting on. You know, they were really keen. And really clear that the that the that the um, success of this show, amongst other things, rested on whether you believe that these people were a believable couple. And uh, from the off, it was clear that we liked each other very much. We we like acting together. We like hanging out with each other. Um, and all of that adds up to just about my favourite experience ever making anything. So as soon as it came in, I was like. I've got to do this. And now we've done it for the last two years. We get to do it again this fall. And I'd be so happy if uh, if this was a fixture of my life for years to come. Uh, well, if we run out of things to talk about, which I don't think is going to happen, I will be asking you to do a series of accents, starting with uh, starting with your uh, southern accent. Um, but, but is that your uh, is that your uh, recollection, uh, Esther, uh, of the chemistry read? 
please feel free to, to say what a terrible person uh, uh, your co-star is. Well, yeah. like I, I said, I'd never heard of Race Ball before, so yeah, I had to yeah, um, she was a, ask yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> say that, say that all you like. Yeah. Huge fan, no, huge I, fan. <laughs> I am, um, yeah. It's 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 exactly what um, what Rafe said. It, it was it was so funny actually at the chemistry read because you do always dread those things because you don't know the person that you're going to be meeting, and how in your brain do you tell yourself? Because you 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 have various control over, you know, you have partial control control over what you're doing acting wise. You can learn your lines. You kind of you have a think about the character, you have all these things in place, but you can't control whether you have chemistry with someone. You can't make your body go, please have chemistry with this person that you've never met before. Um, so it was such a relief meeting Rafe. And we did speak, I just remember we spoke for three hours before going into our actual audition. And I was so, I was so knackered by the time of the speakers we'd chatted what? and chatted and chatted. What, you, so you were tired. exhausted by having to keep the ball in the air socially with me for three hours. No, no it's just three at three hours. I felt like we'd. I just wanted them to be in the room for those three hours. I was so tired. Tired. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm a human. Yeah, I'm, a human. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, I booked the room. So there's this place in the UK called the Spotlight. And I'm going to call you out on this again. We booked the room in this place called The Spotlight, which is a place where you go to audition and you can hire a room to do a self-tape or whatever. And uh, Esther and I met there. I booked the room and it cost me 60 English pounds. Hoping, Listen, uh, thinking, no, hang on. Just thinking that perhaps I would get reimbursed for half of it. It's never, it's never, there's never been a mention of it since. But you know what, more full year. And now she's telling me that she was tired by it. Oh my god, she was no, exhausted you know what? before she... <laughs> I wasn't exhausted. I was just a bit tired. We chatted for three hours straight. That's a long time. Yeah, um, it must but be. But you know yeah. what? <laughs> when I, I I knew that I was all right with Rafe because as soon as we left our um uh our spotlight place, which by the way I didn't ask you to book it for three hours, so it would have been um, a lot no. cheaper for you if it had been an hour. Yeah. Like, okay. I, I uh, thought I would need it to get the requisite chemistry <laughs> with you. <laughs> But when we left the room and we were walking to our chemistry read, Rafe suddenly was like, oh, my God. And I was like, what? And he's like, I've, I've left my glasses up there. And he hadn't got them on his face. And I just thought, oh, you're so, yeah. Fun. This it's is a bit of me. Yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I can get on board with this. Yeah. Um, and you've mentioned the, the creator, Andy Walton. Um, could you talk a little bit about him, Rafe, and... and I, I guess the sort of personal history that, that he brings to, to, to the show. Yeah. So Andy, this is, uh, um, Andy is a, is a, is a British comedy writer and this is his first big commission, right? This is, this is his first, first big sort of, um, show that he's had on and, and what a great, amazing platform to have it on uh, in terms of Apple TV plus, um, it was a big deal for him, big deal for all of us. And he himself was adopted um, by his parents. And so he's got a lot of skin in this game, you know, and, and he was, he was very, um, look, he doesn't, he doesn't wear it on his sleeve. It's not even like he talks about it that much, but you feel like you, you're secure. You feel secure that you know that this has come from the heart and mind of someone who has lived this experience. Um, and at the same time, I think that what in a in such a sort of saturated market in a, in a show where there's in a, in a in a environment where there's so many brilliant shows and so many really good comedy shows, the things that stick are the things that have an original voice. And and um, even though we have influences, the show doesn't feel derivative. It didn't it didn't feel derivative when I first read it, and it doesn't when I watch it. It doesn't when I perform it. Even though it has echoes and of of other shows that we love, it feels fresh. It feels original. Um, it's uh, about a specific tranche of uh, of UK culture that doesn't really get represented by which I mean people that don't necessarily have fancy jobs or a lot of money or a great house. They're normal folk. And I really like the fact that, that he had chosen to set this story, a story which was going out on a platform across the world in a very specific tranche of UK society. And I thought that was 
that was really amazing. So he's just really fresh and clever. And you know what? Like I watch the show now and there's even jokes that I missed when I was doing it. I don't know if you think that, Esther. Like there's mm. like little, there's really cute little tie-ins and really clever things and jokes that he sees all the way through an episode that I didn't even notice when I was doing it. And I'm like, wow, he's really clever. I even emailed him the other day. I was like, Andy, forget everything I said. You're really clever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I love the specificity of the show, and part of it is that it's a very specific um, part of London in, in, in which it's set. And even though, um, I mean, when I lived in London, I lived in, in South London, and I feel the only thing that could have really improved this show is if it was set in South rather than North London. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know that. I know that place. I know that place. And it's obviously not, you know, you think of american films set in london where they all they only seem to race around buckingham palace this is like the opposite of that it's all the bits you mm. don't see but but also the bits that you know i i love in london and and and, and esther that must be I, mean, I guess it must be convenient convenient to go to work but but you know it, it's just so great that it, it it sort of shows london off like this and and, and, a, and a part of london that people don't see necessarily that often yeah absolutely and i think because it is on this global platform, we get to, to show bits of London that when you live here, you, you really know and you really love, like, I guess, the Heath, like Hampstead Heath or Primrose Hill. and um, But you do also get those pockets, you know, like Camden. You see Camden in a very specific light. and But, you, but you're right, like, being able to film in the place that you live is... Very convenient and lovely because it makes the trip into work a lot easier and nicer. But even still, London is a huge place. London's massive. And like you said, like, you know, being South London, I'm South. I'm South East at the minute. And um, you've it's just full of all these different little pockets. And I'm not originally from London, so I'm constantly refinding or finding sorry and exploring and um experiencing different bits of london and it, it feels like it's never it, it's continuous it's it's never ending which is one of the joys of it and how lovely to be able to show that on a global platform to people um yeah it's a it's lovely and just a joy to a joy to film on Hampstead heath and those kind of places and rafe um season two was shot uh after the start of the of the pandemic, which I imagine must have been a very uh, a dramatically different shooting experience from from season one, could you could you talk about that a little? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So we so we shot this show um, September last year, which meant that we were one of the first shows back into production in the UK, and you know, obviously, COVID security was paramount. We were we were the the makers of the show, the producers, the network were extremely um, on that and everyone felt secure uh, in a quite scary time uh, for a lot of people. But the resounding feeling was is that we were just all so pleased to be back at work, Clark. We were like, you know, we, we this show came out at the beginning of the pandemic when everyone was locked in their houses and we knew we'd been commissioned again and we didn't know when we were going to get to come out and do it. And uh, it was it was a worry because because we love it man like we really really love making it and it's not just you know i said earlier how much i love esther and uh but the whole team involved the crew members all of these people these people that you become your family for a while and that you really love and and i know that sounds sort of like a bit sentimental but it's true and then you get to come back together again to have fun and to to to, to do a show that you um that you really, really care about and um, that you really uh, believe in. So, yes, there was COVID security. Yes, everyone had masks on. There was social distancing and testing. But it was, I don't think the quality of the show was ever compromised, which I'm, which I'm pleased about. You wouldn't know. When you watch the second season, you wouldn't know that it was shot during a pandemic. No, I had no idea at all. Although, I guess, idiotically, I was thinking... I would know a show that was shot during the pandemic because people in hazmat suits would be like wandering around in the background. As <laughs> no, I know, no. Or whatever. Yeah, no. Thankfully, <laughs> everyone was able to take their hazmat suits off, do a take, and put them back on. Um, and as to this, as far as the the plot is concerned, in season two, I mean, season one, series one was about um, 
you know, them them putting themselves in a position where uh, they could adopt uh, a child. And now this, this season has been, um, you know, about them actually trying to do that. How, how has that been different for you? Yeah, so this season is about us getting uh, matched with a child. Um, and that's equally having learned it from doing the show it is, is is an equally hard and up and down journey as trying to be approved to be adopt uh, to, to, to be able to adopt so to try and get max a match to a kid there um there's a lot of competition and you still need, i guess the from the kids point of view they're they're the most important thing they're the main thing you need to be the right fit for them. It's not about you just because you've been matched with a child that you get to have a child. Um, it still needs to be right, and their kind, of, their their safety and security, and their their wants and needs are paramount, really. So we so there's a lot of ups and downs within this season. With that, um, they find a couple of kids that they're hopeful for, and it doesn't work out. And then they find one particular child who they fall in love with, princess. And they are so certain that that is their child. But as you see through the season, it's not as simple as that. And I think when you fall in love with someone, fall in love with something, the fall's greater because you want it more, because you think surely everyone else can see that that is the right thing, that is the right fit. And it doesn't necessarily always go your way. And and they have to learn a lot of lessons through that. And so that's... um, that's been a real uh, joy to uh, present that side of the story um, because when it does work out in places, it's so um, it's just so beautiful and and I think you just realize the the stakes of it. And so when it works out, it's just you know you're like thank thank God for, for them and for people going through this experience and this journey. It's um it's really hard and tricky, um, and at times heartbreaking, and I guess that's uh yeah that's been the season two experience with it. Um, but obviously with a lot of laughs as well. It's still a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Very much yeah. so. Uh, we actually have a clip of I think it's the first moment that uh, your characters um, uh, meet Princess or see Princess. Uh, and, and I'd quite like to uh, I'd quite like to play that now. Okay, and I think that's the that, as I said I think that's the clip of the first time um, your characters meet Princess w- Esther. What are you, you you're wearing some you know pretty distinctive uh, outfit there. What, what do you remember about shooting that scene? What do you mean? That's a that's a pretty standard outfit to be wearing. <laughs> those are our, those are our clothes from home. It's about actual clothes. That, that, yeah, that was what she wears it normally. Was, Mufti Day at work, so we get to wear. Yeah. Our, um, <laughs> I don't think our American cousins will know what Mufti Day is. No, they probably won't. What What is the American version of Mufti Day? Wear your own clothes to work. Uh, wear your own clothes. <laughs> yeah, they have. Um, we have. They 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 have Casual Friday. Is, is what it is. Casual, casual Friday. Friday. It's Casual mm. Friday at work. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that yeah, that was. Um, that moment in the script when I read it really got me. I found it so emotional because actually not not a lot happens in terms of dialogue. It's all moment to moment, like beat by beat, and just understanding what that moment meant for Nikki with um, seeing what she deems to be their child for the first time and the weight of that, even like from the script, that just that landed with me. And so filming that, you know, it was... Um, really moving and, and Eden who plays princess she's just she's such an incredible little, little actress she's so um thoughtful and she she really understands I think what what it's about and, and what it means and and just kind of seeing her with her Bob the Builder outfit on next to a tree it I just it just it just broke my heart but obviously inevitably there was um you know there's always that pressure of trying to get those scenes right because you understand the weight of them. So that day for me was very, I was really nervous to film that scene because 
because because I think because it meant so much to me and because I understood that it meant so much to the rest of the story you can't help but put a bit of pressure on yourself which is so unhelpful at times not at times Mm -hmm. all the time (laughs) it's so unhelpful all the time to put pressure on yourself um so you really have to find a way to bat those thoughts away and just kind of do it and just be in it and um I think it's um a really lovely moment in the series I think yeah and you have this um you know the uh the rest of the cast is is absolutely fantastic, but I, I if I may, um, I'd like to mention uh, Imelda Staunton, who is who is both uh, you know UK acting royalty and now in fact actual royalty, uh, going to be playing, going to be starring in in the Crown. Rafe, did you had you worked with Imelda b- b- before? I'd never worked with Imelda. Um, my dad, who's an actor, he he had many times. Um, and uh, had given her a very good report before 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 we met her. But you know, I think um, I think when we both found out that she was going to be in the show, we were really excited and sort of um, yeah, blown away. Because as you say, she she is royalty uh, in the acting community. She's she's as good at acting as it's possible to be, and and as good an actress as she is, she's an equally great person and. Um, I think Esther and I always look forward to those days when she came in because not only is she such fun to be around, like she's a real laugh. She's a, she's silly and fun and, um, all the things that like acting should be, it should be a laugh because, because we put other people's clothes on, clothes on, put makeup on and pretend to be other people. Sure. It's a serious business, but that seriousness it should be kept private in my opinion. Uh, but when the camera turns on, oh my goodness, she's so impressive. And we, she's usually got a, a lot of dialogue in the scenes and a lot of props that she's fiddling with. And it's, um, at the want of sounding <laughs> sort of trite, it's a masterclass. It's a real acting masterclass. Just to see the way she goes about her work is extremely impressive. She's so light. So she'll have reams of dialogue, loads of props, but she makes it sound, feel so easy. And me and Mrs. over it, we just we just sit sit there and, and marvel at it, and um, it's uh, extremely impressive. Although since she's become the queen, she insists on insists that we call her uh, Your Majesty. We have to curtsy when she walks in a room. She's become extremely grand. <laughs> and what about you, Esther? What's it like working with? I mean, were you were you nervous when when you first uh, 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 did a scene with her? Yeah, I was really nervous, actually, when I first did a scene with her. For, you know, for all those reasons Rafe has just, like, said, she's 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 so incredibly talented. And obviously, her reputation is is huge as, as this brilliant actress. And I can remember the first scene I did with her, which was just me and her on our own. So I was left to my own devices, which is just, just always nerve-wracking, knowing that's going to happen. And we had like, um, it was, we were in a Thai food place eating Thai food. And for some reason, I just went so quiet, like my kind of conversation in between, like talking to her in between shots. It's just like, I couldn't, I couldn't project out. And then I started talking about jellyfish for some reason. And I was just like, why am I talking about jellyfish? Melda Storm <laughs> doesn't care if I'm talking about jellyfish. Is that why you go, is that why you go quiet with me? No, you're going a bit deaf. <laughs> is that is that why you go so quiet with me in between takes? No, you you're just you're with... going a bit. You're just going a bit deaf. You can't really hear. Uh, really. I'm very loud with you. Okay, right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was. Yeah, I was very. Yeah, I was really nervous, but then instantly she kind of, you know, she just makes you feel at ease and comfortable, and she's just so normal and down to earth, and um. And then yeah. you told her to get in a bin. Then look, she was all. She was also. <laughs> she's also sort of. Oh my god, I was so blown away by the great, should be Dame Imelda Staunton, Oscar nominated. But by the second season, Esther literally told her to get in a bin, and she did. <laughs> she did in a she, trash just... can. She put Imelda Staunton in no, a. No, it wasn't can. trash can. It was a, re- a recyclable. It was. Recyclables. Oh well, that's easy. So there was no food yeah. waste in there. <laughs> And this bin was huge, and I just. <laughs> she said to her, oh, "Get in the bin." Imelda can fit in there. 
she said, "Get can you fit in there, Imelda? And she got in it. That's the sort she of person she is. Without a hesitation, she got in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to get her out of it, which was tricky. <laughs> and Esther, you... Um, um, sort of hinted, meant briefly mentioned this before, but uh, I know that, um, you know, there are, there are uh, quite a few people who are in the same situation as your characters who have reached out to you, um, since you since you started appearing in the show. Could, could you talk about that a little? Yeah, so uh, a lot of, because I'm on social media and one of the great things about social media is that you do get that direct contact with people who want to reach out and express an opinion about the show. And quite often I get people that have gone through the process or, or who are currently going through the process who feel, you know, just grateful that their story is being told and represented. They feel seen with it. And also that, that it, it feels true to their experience, which is always lovely because it feels like a real validation of the show that we've, we're putting out because we strive to try and make it as you know as real to a situation as possible because that's part of the responsibility as well as you know making it um as well as you know adding the comedy element to it but particularly this last year when it's a I think it's a it's a hard enough process as it is but then having to do that through covid what's been really um humbling is people reaching out saying that they just haven't felt alone with it because obviously we're restricted on what we can do or have been able to do so like in the show where Jason and Nikki go to these picnics where they're meeting other couples that are going through the same process so you can at least have that community around you because of last year people haven't been able to have that kind of community around them I mean maybe online but I think that is a different completely different ball game um so it's been really lovely to get those messages from people who feel like they're not they're not on their own with it, um, and that what a, what a joy to receive that, and um, yeah, really humbling. And Rafe, if I can uh, op- talk a bit more broadly for a second, you've I mean you've you've done so many different things in your career, um, but you've done a lot of uh, you know relationship based material like trying. Um, but you've also spent, you know, a fair amount of time running around from dinosaurs and aliens and and so forth. Are they like totally different jobs, or is or do you feel it's the same job, but you know, on a, on a on a literally different different type of stage? So I did um, I did Jurassic Park, Men in Black, and a BBC adaptation of War of the Worlds in a row, and then so to spend the best part of two years pretending to be afraid of a tennis ball on a stick can, can wear a little thin. And if anything was the opposite of a tennis ball on a stick, it's Esther Smith. And that's the nicest thing I can say about you. Um, it, it is different. It's very, very different. I'm very lucky to be able to do both of those things. And um, there is a particular sort of fulfillment and fun you get as a performer doing those things in so much as you're on those huge sets and you're like man my kids are gonna love this mm-hmm. and uh, oh, i thought you meant you're gonna be able to put your kids through through an expensive uh, expensive school there is that there is also that um and uh all of the great things that come with that and it's really nice to be um in those huge tentpole movies. I mean, that's what you imagined being in films was going to be like when you were a kid. But really, my heart, my uh, sort of artistic interest, the stuff that I like to do is opposite another human being exploring the human condition. And uh, that's what I get to do on this show. And that's what I said earlier, uh, was that this is what I've been waiting for, uh, is, is to, like, do a show which is number one, the sort of show that I want to watch this, like I would watch trying. Uh, and number two, a show which reflects my experience of life. Um, and all of that adds up to a really, really wonderful experience. And like, God, God willing, I get to do big films like that again, but I, I would really be happy just, just doing, just doing this show for, for, for the foreseeable future. Cause I, I, I love it, man. I love it. 
And Esther, you were in the, the original West End production of uh, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And I remember, you know, I was living in America at the time, but I remember, you know, hearing about people basically rearranging their entire, you know, holidays to, to go and see it. What, what, what was that experience like? I mean, that was an experience like no other, and I don't think I expected it to be the experience that it was. For that reason, for, you know, the overwhelm of the fans, it's such a, it's such a specific... Well, it's, it's it's a huge franchise, isn't it? And the fandom are massive, and we were I think we were all a bit scared at putting it on onto the stage to put it in a theatrical uh, light. And um, that first preview was like <laughs> just overwhelming. People, I've never been in a theatre doing a play where the audience have been at times more vocal than the people on stage. <laughs> it felt like we were at a, a concert and. The um, yeah, the kind of the standing ovation at the end and the noise from that is genuinely um, something that I feel really. It was like it, it it was a it was a hard job because because of the nature of what it means to be part of that franchise and trying to um, kind of uh, give great integrity to a story that means a, a lot to so many people. And also, it's a it was a two you know a two show so like three hours for one show, three hours for another show, and the story goes over these two parts. So it was a real big beast, and there was a lot of like magic. There was a lot of stunts. I was kind of on wires for most of the time, um, which was a, another brilliant experience. Um, but yeah, um, when you I say on wires, so... is that is that slang word for drugs? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a slang word. Oh, you meant literal wires. <laughs> Long wires. Oh, yeah, oh sorry, sorry, wired. my bad, my bad. I thought you were you said you were wired. The I entire wasn't time. high. Oh, uh, uh, right. So my bad, my bad. <laughs> no, um, yeah. So it's a uh, what an an amazing thing to be part of, particularly that first that first carnation of it. Um, and um, yeah, I feel very proud to have been part of it terrifying job but glad that i did it you should always see things that scare you so, so yeah like and, and esther I, like <laughs> <laughs> um I, we, we we spoke about this earlier in the year so i hope you don't mind me bringing up again but when i was uh, researching um interviewing uh you both for entertainment weekly i was like oh they both appeared in this black mirror episode so i assume they knew each other from then. Although I did remember thinking, well, I remember Rafe being tormented by John Hamm yeah. Yeah. in a, you know, desolate Arctic base or whatever. Um, and I'm sure Esther had a similarly, ex, you know, fantastic role, but I couldn't quite remember what it was. Would you, I, I mm. would you, would you mind telling, relating that story, Esther? Yeah. Mm. I'm surprised you don't remember me in it, to be honest, because Madge the anaesthetist was a very important part <laughs> In the whole of that episode, I literally mm. had one line where I just said my name and that I was an, an, an anaesthetist. And I can't even say it now, but I had to say, they had to cut and say the line about 10 times because also <laughs> for some reason I forgot how to walk and talk. And it was so embarrassing. But um, but yeah, I just had the one line. So our paths never really, <laughs> never really crossed <laughs> doing Black Mirror, well. unfortunately. <laughs> um, and so the second season of. Uh, trying is coming to an end. Um, uh, fans are about to see the finale of season two. Obviously, we don't want to give anything away, really. But Rafe, can you can you can you tease the uh, season two finale at all? Gosh, what little teases can I can I give? I think that the audience will be satisfied and will be. Um, also all geared up for a third season you know i think that's what great i think mm -hmm. that's what great season finales do is they they uh tie up some loose ends and give you enough to look forward to for the next season uh so as you know um the season is uh is about them finding their one finding their kid and uh the mat the 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 approval of that is difficult and so there is a there is a resolution, but it isn't what you expect, and 
uh, it's surprising and beautiful and moving and funny, all of the things that I think the show is. And uh, we we know as much as anyone else does at this point, apart from the fact that we know what happens in the last episode. But we don't know what's going to happen in the third season. We're waiting with bated breath for the scripts. We can't wait. And um, I just wish I could fast forward time and uh, to get to, to that, that first day on that on that third season because, uh, yeah, I know I've said this a lot, but we really love it, Clark. And Esther, can you, can you add anything to that in a, anything that isn't going to involve all your Apple products suddenly shutting down? <laughs> um, I think Rafe has done a very good job at teasing what season three is going to be. Uh, season two. I don't know what season three is going to be at all. Um, Hang on, uh, have you got the scripts? <laughs> maybe. This no, I haven't. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, but that's, you know, that's so lovely. I love that we don't know yet and that come autumn, their stories will have developed in some some way because it could go in many different ways. That's the thing. Season two, end of season two, it could go in. There is a number of ways it can go. And um, it's like Ray said, it's not what you think it's going to be. But, you know, what's amazing is, is that, again, I said it before, that, this, that Andy is there, like, writing eight episodes by himself, man. And in this day and age... Like I don't know that many people who have who have written sixteen eps in a row. It's a real and, and another mm. eight. It's really really impressive. Um, so he's working away in his dungeon someplace, um, <laughs> writing us some lovely episodes. I, I hope and I expect. And we're running out of time, unfortunately. I I, I could I could listen to you uh, amiably torment each other all day. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> But is there, um, when you look back on these two seasons, or even season two, is there, what's the sort of day of shooting um, which, which leaps to mind uh, when you think of shooting the show? Rafe, let's, let's start with you. Um, there was, uh, there's a few. Uh, you know what, like, I, she looks like she's smiling, like she's got something up her sleeve. But... Um, <laughs> But I, I, I love, I love the scenes in their apartment. So in the last two seasons, what we've done is, is we've, um, we shoot all the exteriors and then we go into the location. Uh, we, we go into the, um, studio where we do their, their apartment, uh, which people are always very surprised to hear is a studio, which is good because it looks like a real, a real apartment and all the show, all the scenes that me and, Esther do there are my favourite because I think it's part of the great merit of the show is these couple in their natural habitat and I think a lot of the audience watch that and go oh yeah that's what a relationship feels like they bicker they argue they fall out but they love each other they make up um, they talk shit on their friends which I think is eminently identifiable and um, all the stuff in this in all the stuff in the, in the in the apartment is really beautiful to do that's where i think the show sort of lives um so i love doing all that um that yeah, nothing in particular jumps out but all the scenes that i get to do with her in a in a hot room in a boiling hot in a boiling hot <laughs> studio <laughs> and my favorite what about you sds i well i i have to agree with that there and um, i love when a Jason and Nikki argue, actually. I actually think one of the... I love all the stuff in the studio for all the reasons that Rafe has just said, but one of my favourite scenes, actually, is when we're bickering and arguing about their uh, Jason's bike. I knew and we're uh, mm. along the street, and we have to do a little storm-off competition mm. with each other. Mm. I, 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 just, I just love their, um, their bickering, because they're just passionate, and they love each other, and and it's it they're just they're just so fun to do because you can't help but want to laugh and you can kind of see a little glint in you know Rafe's eye when mm. he wants to laugh and then you you know you equally want to laugh with it and that yeah I think that's that that really stands out for me that really stands do you know what it's it's, what, it's what, go on carry on oh no no I was just gonna say I'm watching it back it's you know I just think it's it's also such an emotional scene because they just they they're both that both their intentions are, are 
uh, honourable and they, you know, you can see you can see the argument for both sides of the coin, which is what makes that argument really special because there's no real <laughs> there's no real winner of it. Um, it's two people just wanting to do the right thing and the good thing and. And but also when I, when, I watch, when I watch the scenes though is like because you spend a lot of time me and Esther are in more or less every scene together and when we, we spend a lot of time set, sat around whilst they're setting up the shots like talking shit right like talking to each other so <laughs> when I watch when I watch the show I know exactly what me and Esther were talking about off camera right like I know I'm like oh that was when we were having the conversation about that that was when we were talking about that and it's really special because it's like a it's you know like when you're when you're in tv shows they're like um a marker of time like you you sure you watch the character sure the work is is paramount extremely important you're in it in between action and cut you're thinking about it you're doing all the stuff but it's a snapshot of your life like you knew where you were when that was happening and so you knew where you were emotionally mentally all those things and that makes watching this show a really sort of profound experience. Everything you ever do, but this more than anything. It's um, and it almost feels a bit like like we want as many people to watch this show as possible. But it also does feel sort of weirdly private. We're like, oh no, like, I can't, like it feels a bit like this is our like little baby and this special yeah. thing that we all went through together. And now everyone's looking at it. It's quite sort of uh, weird and exposing. I well, think particularly first, I... for this kind of oh sorry sorry I was going to no, no, on. I was going to say don't. particularly I think for this for for this particular show because because in essence it is quite a private thing between a couple experiencing something very private so that kind of adds to that feeling of it feeling quite well it's quite an intimate thing between.